Holy Caesars will get you every time, won't they? Hallelujah. It's good to see all of you in the house of worship this morning. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for being awesome, for being wonderful and kind, because he didn't have to wake us up this morning, but he did. He didn't have to keep us in our right minds, but he did. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he builds up a standard against us. He could have let the enemy take us out, but he did not. I love that word, but, because what comes behind is greater than the thing that was before it. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to Zion Canaan Baptist Church, where Jesus Christ is the head of everything we do. Reverend Eugene Miller is our pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. We're grateful for all of you that are here with us in the sanctuary and for those of you that are joining us online. Just keep that praise going, y'all. Nothing. It's something about the name Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's the sweetest name I know. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm Reverend Tasha Taylor. Today is the third Sunday in March. Today is Youth Sunday. Let's thank God for our young people. Our praise team is here. Our dancers are here. And they're going to come and bless us today. Today is... Um, the week before, we have the installation of our anointed new pastor, Reverend Eugene Miller. Stand up, sir, let the people look at you. Oh, we can do better than that. We can do much better than that. Hallelujah. This is our shepherd, our under shepherd. Amen. We thank God for him. So we will have that service next Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. It'll be the installation of our new pastor and the installation of church officers. We will have a combined choir. Y'all, we're going to bring some choir members back that want to come and sing. So those, uh, there'll be some information sent out. Several people have already responded. Rehearsals for that will be Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. and next Saturday at 6.30 p.m. For everyone interested in coming out, to be a part of the combined choir. Please check your emails for important information that the church sends out weekly. There's information that you need to know about what's going on, different programs, um, things that you just need to know to be a part, you know, as you're a part of this ministry, the time is spent to get all that information out to you. So it is imperative that you read that and check it. And again, we're in the season of Lent. So how many people are grateful for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ before he went to the cross? Amen. Amen. Now we, some of us seem to take some things for granted, but one thing we should never take for granted is he could have come down. He had all power to come down from that cross. He had the power to stop and say no more. He asked God, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, Father, but your will be done. And he endured to the cross to the point of death for us, all of us, y'all. Amen. Amen. I'm here to tell you. In Psalm 57 and 3, the Bible says, He will send down help from heaven to save me because of his love. That's what Jesus did on Easter. And that's why we can bring our mess, our failures, our disappointments, our achievements, our joys, everything about us, we can bring it to God. There are people who think that because of the things that they've done in their past, you know, I used to be out there, I used to do this, I used to do that, that they can't come. Jesus said, come as you are. We can't fix ourselves up enough to be right. We can't fix ourselves up enough to put ourselves where we need to be. Otherwise, we wouldn't have needed a Savior. Amen? So God will never lose love for you. Don't lose hope that his love is gone. Amen. And as we go into the season, we have to remember that our young people are collecting uh, cents for Lent, the coins and the jars that they received in Sunday school. Please make sure that you take your extra change. If you notice a little jingle in the bottom of your purse or you come from the store and gentlemen, I know how my son does. Every, chain, every bit of change he has goes in the cup holder or in the door. <laughs> Reach in there and grab your change and save it. Bring it to church for our young people. Amen? Amen. And remember, it's just like when we come to Christ, it's like riding a bike. You're going to start off a little wobbly and shaky. Then you're going to get it. You're going to be on it. You'll be able to go. 
You may fall off, not once, but a few times. But what do you do? You get back up. You pick yourself up. Shake yourself off, dust yourself off, and you get back up there and going. Amen? Amen. Now, let's thank God for our young people this morning. We will have scripture by Ileana Smith, prayer by Zoe Reeves, which will be followed by the youth announcements from uh, Mrs. Donna Martin, the Youth Black History Moment. Every Sunday that the youth are officiating, they will give us a black history moment. Amen. They're going to bless us with more and more information as they do more, which will be followed by praise and worship and praise dance. So please be attentive, young people, and their leaders, where they will go. But before they come, Pastor Miller has a couple of announcements that he would like to make. Good morning, Zion Canaan family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're just beautiful. You're just beautiful. You don't realize how beautiful you are, but you're just beautiful. Amen. But before we get started this morning, I want to say a few things. Next, March the 26th, all men and all women who are want to be a part of the men's conference planning session, I need your assistance. I need you to be there with me starting next Sunday after church, um, men and women. My thrust here at Zion Canaan is that men and women working together to fulfill the cause of Christ. Amen? Not just men and not just women and not one of them tearing the whole load. Men and working together to fulfill the cause of Christ. Amen. So next Sunday, I'm looking forward to uh, putting together a committee so we can begin to plan the men's conference that will be happening in June on the Father's Day weekend. Also, April the 2nd, we're beginning to plan for our uh, revival that will be happening in August. We're going to do something new this year. Children will have a revival in the daytime. Men, uh, the rest of the church, uh, the, uh, the adult will have a revival at night. Amen. Having young speakers come in to speak to our children, it'll be in the summertime, so you don't have no excuse. It's the week right before school. Amen. Amen. We are also out, uh, going to be reaching out to Benedict, so I need some people to begin to um, build that arena, build that bridge so we can begin to build, reach out to Benedict and the students of Benedict. So we got two buses. Amen? We got two buses. So there is no reason why we cannot have students from Benedict come to Sign Cana. Amen? And then all the people who went to Benedict said, Amen. 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 We need that, those two groups. March the 26th, which is next week, planning for the men's conference. April the 2nd, we'll be planning to start out getting a, comp getting a committee together to plan for, the, for, our, for our revival. So come. Come. You say, well, I've never done nothing like that before. I don't know what to do. Don't matter. Don't matter. If you got an idea, I want to hear it. If you got a concept, I want to hear it. Amen. I believe this. If the Holy Ghost is on the inside of me, the Holy Ghost is on the inside of you. Just like he's talking to me, he's talking to you. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So bring your ideas, bring your concepts, bring for either one of these committees. Please come. Let us do what God has called us to do. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you so much. <laughs> Psalm 127, 3 through 5. Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As the arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. 
Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in, at the gate. Good morning, church. My name is Zoe, and I'll be doing a prayer this morning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another for your gift for another youth Sunday. We will praise your name. We will sing and dance to you, God. For for you have done great and glorious things for us, your ch your children. We know that you have we know that you can meet all of our needs, and you have told the world that children are blessing, joy to be loved, and to be guided in your way. We ask that you make your presence known in this worship service today. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, church. I have a few announcements. I don't have one of you announcements, but I do have a service announcement for one of my members. She works at SCT TV, and she wants our children and youth to know um, SCE TV is having casting call commercials and shows from kids 5 through 18. You need to go to SCE tv.org, click on education, um, discovery day, and stroll down to register the kids to audition on April 14th, um, 2023. We are only accepting 130 kids, so if you're interested, please register your kids today. That is seetv.org. You got to April 14th to register. So we got a lot of actors in here, actresses. I know two so far, Mr. Kamari, Ms. Jalea. So y'all need to come on out there. Understand? Any more in the audience? I'll call you out. <laughs> All right. I got a couple of children here. Miss Erica Spencer, please stand up. Here she go in the back, y'all. She might be a little tired. She had to run track. You had to run track yesterday? Or your sister? Sister Jen. Well, anyway, Miss Erica is a mighty shamrock of Eau Claire High School. Senior. All right. Um, she's a legend maker for 2022-23 school year by District 1. Erica's also ranked number four in 2A wrestling. 130, 138 in the state, pounds in the state. Erica also performed with the Richmond One District Honors Band on the tuba and District Honors Orchestra, second chair on the viola. Amen. Miss <laughs> Adrian, please stand up. All right, Miss Adrian, on her outstanding accomplishments making South Carolina Band Directors Association Region 3, she performed at Nations Four High School in Fort Mill, South Carolina. She auditioned in January and ended up making seventh chair tuba out of the entire region. That's from Richland County to York County. An agent also performed in um, Richland One District Honors Band. She made second chair on the tuba. Amen. Congratulations to all. Report cards will be coming out soon, I know. So congratulations to all the youth out here who got achievements. And y'all have a great day and an awesome week. Amen. Amen. Now we have Mr. Donovan. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Donovan Chisholm. I'll be reading this passage today. It is titled, What is Your Life Blueprint? So, y'all are ready. Six months before he was assassinated, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke to a group of students at Barrett Junior High School in Philadelphia on October 26, 1967. I want to ask you a question, and that is, what is your life's blueprint? Whenever a building is constructed, you usually have an architect who draws a blueprint, and that blueprint serves as a pattern and as a guide, and a building is not well erected without a solid good um, blueprint. Now, each of you is in a process of building the structure of your lives. And the question is whether you have a proper, solid, and sound blueprint. I want to suggest some things that should begin your life's blueprint. Number one, you should be in deep belief uh, of your own dignity, your own worth, and your own somebodiness. 
Do not allow anybody to make you feel that you're nobody. Always feel like you count. Always feel that you have worth and always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Secondly, in your life's blueprint, you must have the basic principle of determination to achieve excellence in your various fields and endeavors. You're going to decide as the days and years unfold what you will do in life, what your life's work will be, and set out to do it well. And I say to you, my young friends, doors are opening. Doors of opportunities that were not open for your mothers and fathers, and the great challenge facing you is being ready to face those doors as they open. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the great essayist, said in a lecture in 1871, if a man can write a better book or preach a better sermon or make a better mousetrap than his neighbor, even if he builds his house in the woods, the world will make a beaten path to his door. This hasn't always been true, but it will increasingly, but it will become increasingly true. And so I would urge you to study hard and burn that midnight oil. I would say to you, don't drop out of school. I understand all the sociological reasons, but I urge you that in spite of your economic plight, in spite of the situation you're forced to live in, stay in school. And when you discover what you will be in life, set out to do it as if God Almighty called you at this particular moment in history to do it. Don't just set out to do a good job, set out to do such a good job that the living, the dead, and the unborn couldn't do it any better. If it falls in your lot to be a street sweeper, sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep streets like Beethoven composed music. Sweep streets like Leontine Price sings before the Metropolitan Opera. Sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept and did his job well. If you can't be a pine at the top of the hill, be a shrub in the valley. Be the best shrub on the side of the hill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be a sun, be a star. For it isn't by the size that you win or fail, but the best of whatever you are from the estate of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.
once again from the ushers at the door to the ladies singing the praise dancers and those who have made the great achievements and even the ones that we did not get to recognize give all of our youth again a round of applause as well as the parents we praise God for them we praise God for them for those of you who don't know me I am Reverend Marie Birkins, one of the associate ministers here at Zion Canaan, under the leadership of our former pastor, Smith, praise God for him, and under the leadership of our current pastor, um, officially to be next week, Reverend Miller, amen. I'd certainly like to uh, give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to give honor to God, my Father, and to the precious Holy Spirit. Again, I'd like to give honor and thanks to Pastor Miller for allowing me this opportunity to stand before you to give you a word from God this morning. I'd also like to recognize and, and give honor to the ministerial team here at Zion Canaan and for the support and the love and the prayers that we have for each other and for me this morning as well. And also to you all, my family here at Zion Canaan, praise God for you being in my life for over 20 years now. Praise the Lord for you all. I, I greet you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, young people this morning, I hope you don't go to sleep and I hope you don't go out anywhere because this is a word for you. Although everyone can benefit from it, the word is for you this morning. Amen. So if we would all stand to our feet, our scripture this morning is going to be coming from the book of Mark, chapter 12. And I'll be reading verses 1 through 12 from the New King James Version, Mark, chapter 12, verses 1 through 12, from the New King James Version. And it reads, Then he began to speak to them in parables, a man planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a place for the wine vat, and built an, a tower. And he leased it to vine dressers and went into a far country. Now at vintage time, he sent a servant to the vine dressers that he might receive some of the fruit of the vineyard from the vine dressers. And they took him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Again, he sent them another servant, and at him they threw stones, wounded him in the head and sent him away, shamefully treated. And again he sent another, and him they killed, and many others, beating some and killing some. Therefore, still having one son, his beloved, he also sent him to them last, saying, They will respect my son. But those vine dressers said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. Therefore, what will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the vine dressers and give the vineyard to others. Have you not even read the scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they sought to lay hands on him, but feared the multitude, for they knew he had spoken the parable against them. So they left him and went away. And this morning, youth, young people, children, ladies, gentlemen, saints, I want to give you a thought this morning that there is no room for squatters. There is no room for squatters. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. Again, for another opportunity to stand in your presence, God. We thank you, Father, for your word that has already been blessed. We thank you for the power and the might that's in your word, dear God. We pray, Father, for the power of your anointing this morning, God. 
so that as I speak to your people, they will not see me, but they will see you, and they will have ears to hear and hearts to receive just what you have for them this morning, God. We pray, Father, that you will remove every distraction, dear God, that the enemy wants to put in their face, dear God, so that they will see clearly your glory, dear Father. And everything that they are looking for, that they are searching for, God, that they will find it in you, God, because you said that no weapon formed against your, against your people will prosper. And everything that you have sent your word out to do, it will be so according to your will and your plan and your purpose, God. So we look forward to you doing that today, God. So we thank you for it already. In the name of Jesus, all of God's people say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. No more squatters. Now suppose you had an enormous estate, more land that you could ever use or develop. You pay taxes on it and ride on a horse every once in a while to survey all your holdings. Finally, you notice some evidence of someone squatting on your land. An old cabin at the edge of the property shows signs of being used. Oh well, they aren't hurting anybody, that's what you say. Don't you, have any, don't you have more than enough? Live and let live. That's what you always say. So now you're gone, and your property is passed on to your son. He remembers how, you rode with you, how he rode with you on certain occasions to inspect the land. You never did anything about squatters, so neither will he. He figured you had a reason for letting them live there. Anyhow, by now, they've lived there so long that they've established a little vegetable garden and they've put up some new buildings on the property. Finally, all the vast holdings pass to the third generation, your grandson. But he's got big plans for his inheritance. Squatters are not welcome. He boldly tells them to leave and they nod their head and they go right back to business as usual. After all, they've lived here a long time and they've really settled in. So why should they listen to some fanatical upstart? So next, your grandson goes to court and he gets an eviction notice and he posts it on the door. They think that's mighty irritating, so they tear it down. They decide to build a fence around their little spread with the keep out sign so he will get the message that they now consider this their land. After all, isn't possession nine-tenths of the law? The grandson wondered what's it going to take, but he isn't going to give up. He legally establishes his property line in court and then asks the sheriff to come out and to remove all these people. They are physically ejected, but they hover around just over the line. Now, when things settle down, they plan to return. But your grandson is much smarter than you or your son was. He immediately tears down every building that they use and he destroys the garden, the fence, and every trace of them ever having been there. Nor does he leave the land vacant. He begins to build something new. The squatters never return. They move on down the road and find a small abandoned cabin on someone else's property and then they start all over again. Hey, there will always be landowners who put up with squatters, right? That's the end of that story. Now, this is a story that I saw online, but this has actually happened in my family. I have property in Gulfport, Mississippi that was left to me and my sister from our maternal grandmother. The property is maybe a quarter of an acre. There's no building on the property. It's only vacant land. Now, my nephew, my sister's son, was contacted by the, the city of Gulfport by neighbors that squatters had moved on the land with all their belongings making a mess of the property. So pictures were sent to my nephew, and we can see that they have moved on the property a trailer, a porta potty a little motorcycle, some other junk and debris thrown all over the place. And if we don't clean up this area by a certain date, we will be penalized with a fine. Now, the story that I read, as well as my real life situation, this is an example of how the devil tries to live on your land, even through multiple generations. He sneaks to the edge somehow 
and somewhere, and then he squats down in a way that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of difference to begin with. But what I want you to know, young people, children, adults alike, I want you to know that Satan will do this to any person at any time, whether you are saved or unsaved. And if you have not given your life over to Christ, then you have left an open field in your life just waiting for him and his agents to come in and take up residence. Amen? You have allowed him to come onto your property, which is your life, and make a mess of it in the form of by you saying, well, it's okay to take recreational drugs every now and then. You might say that it's okay to, to have intimate relationships with multiple people. You might say that it's okay to be respectful and disobedient to your parents. You may say that it's okay to listen to any kind of music that comes across the airwaves. You may say that it's okay to shoplift just small stuff. You may say that it's okay to look at just one X-rated video every now and then. You may say that it's okay to use profanity with your friends. And because your property is not occupied, but instead is left open, you begin to indulge in those things that Satan has brought to your mind. Know that whatever sin you allow in your life is a curse not only for you, but for your future generations, unless you repent and tear that house down. Amen? In Exodus chapter 20, verse 5, God told Moses and the children of Israel, For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations. Satan will be a squatter in your life. If you don't remove him and his agents before your soul is required of God, then there will be a penalty for you to face, which is eternal damnation. Now, there are people who have not given Satan the key to take up residence in their life, but they have given him the key to rent the property. You know how it is when you rent a house or you rent an apartment. You have to sign a lease, and then you make an agreement with the landlord to live in a place for a certain amount of time. Now, during that time, you could do whatever you want to do in that place, and you can have whoever you want to have in that place, just as long as you pay your rent at the appropriate agreed-upon time, right? The thing about renting, though, is that you are subject to the landlord. He basically has control over your place of residency. If he puts certain guidelines in place by which you should follow in order for you to live there, then you must abide by those guidelines. And if you don't abide by those guidelines, then you will be put out of place, out of that place, and you will be left out in the cold. Satan will do the same thing to you if you have chosen to have him as your landlord. If you have given him a key and have allowed him to rent a space in your mind and in your heart, then he is your landlord. He governs your body. He is in control of what you will and what you will not do. He is in control of everything. And if you don't follow his guidelines, then he could bring harm to your body in the form of illnesses, in the form of physical, uh, physical violence, in the form of stress and anxiety on the mind, which will ultimately affect your body. Once the devil has taken up residence, he will be hard to remove. He will ignore you. He will fight back. He will hunker down and fairly demand to be blasted out before he finally leaves. He will look for ways to return and squat once again unless you are smart and use your life to build something new. Amen? I was recently looking at a CNN program that's called This is Life with Lisa Ling, and she featured a story about people, human beings, people like you and I, who have developed AI relationships. Now, for those of you who don't know what AI means, because I just learned what that means myself, it means artificial intelligence. And there is a company outside of Las Vegas, Nevada, that manufactures dolls, which are sold to individuals who have difficulty in having personal relationships with other human beings. And these people use these lifelike dolls as their partner, as their companion to meet any need they may require. 
These are people who have developed serious relationships with these lifelike dolls to the point where they communicate with them just as if they are real human beings. Now, this is a relatively new tactic that Satan has developed to get into the psyche of people who feel lonely and alone, de developing relationships to fill a void for friendships and companionship. And these are people who have allowed Satan to squatter on free, open minds to bring harm that they are not even aware of. There are people who are using even their cell phones to develop relationships via an app that will create an avatar that, can, that they can socialize with. This app is designed to give the user a virtual best friend, someone who will listen and talk to them at any time of the day or night. Satan is doing everything he can in his power to destroy anyone who may have an inkling of a thought to turn, to the, to turn their hearts towards God. Leaving an open room for him in your mind and in your heart is inviting him in to be a squatter. However, the one who has made it very clear that his house has been paid in full and no key will be given to anyone who's not supposed to have access to it, there are no trespassing signs for everyone to see, then that person should have no squatters on his property. If they try to come on the property, they are illegal intruders and they will be prosecuted. Now, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ and you've accepted his gift of salvation by, great, by faith through his grace, then your house, which is your life, your body, your mind, your soul, it has been paid in full by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? And because of his shed blood, Satan does not have the keys for entry into your life. As a matter of fact, the keys that were given to him by the first Adam due to his rebellion against God has been taken away by the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And now you, child of God, have eternal life with Christ in the heavenly kingdom. Amen? Amen. Satan will try to get on the property by any means that he deems necessary, but you have a no trespassing sign posted on your house, posted on your life which is in the form of the blood of Jesus Christ, which covers your whole life. Amen? Therefore, no squatters can get by this sign. And if they try, we have the prayers of the righteous, which availeth much. We can declare Psalm 91, where God tells us that he is our shelter. He is our refuge. He is our safety. He will rescue us from Satan's traps. He will protect us from deadly diseases. He is our covering. And we don't have to fear the arrows that fly in the day nor the terrors of the night. He is faithful to his promises, and we can certainly trust him. Amen? Demonic spirits try to settle in places where they don't belong to keep God's children from living in their rightful fullness. But it's eviction time. It's time to drive out the enemy and take control of your territory. Listen, children. Listen, listen, young people. Listen, youth. Listen, adults. Be careful of the artist's music that you listen to and who you allow to have influence over your life. For instance, I know a lot of people in here know Jay-Z, but I want to tell you about a radio inter interview that I came across uh, that was held by the New York City's DJ Angie Martinez on Hot 97 back in 2010. Jay-Z addressed rumors that he's a member of this super secret cult, Illuminati, and that he's a devil worshiper. This is his response. He says, I don't know where it started. I don't know where it came from. I really think it's silly, he says. For the record, I of course believe in God, but I believe in one God. If people must know my religious beliefs, I believe in one God. I don't believe in religion. I don't believe in Christians or Muslims. I think all that separates people. I think it's one God. I think it's all the same God, and I don't believe in hell. But as far as God, of course I believe in God. Am I a part of some sect or cult? That sounds stupid to me, he says. It's like ignorant to say, to even say, and um, 
I guess that'll be the last time I address that. It's ignorant to me. That's what Jay-Z says. My response to that is first I want you to look at Acts chapter 11, verses 25 through 26, where it says that then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Now the word Christian means Christ one. In other words, to be one with Christ, having the mind of Christ, having the character of Christ. Secondly, to address his comment about hell, the Bible describes hell as a place of eternal torment in Luke 16, 23, a place of unquenchable fire in Mark 9, 43, a place where the worm does not die in Mark 9, 48, a place where people will gnash their teeth in anguish and regret in Matthew 13, 42, and a place from which there is no return, not even to warn your loved ones. That's found in Luke 16, 19, and 19 through 31. And then Jesus refers to hell as a location of outer darkness in Matthew 25 and 30. And he compares it to Guiana in Matthew 10, 28, which was a garbage dump, but beyond the walls of Jerusalem where garbage was burnt and maggots abounded. Jesus speaks more about hell than he does about paradise. And why do you think that's so? Because according to 2 Peter 3 and 9, he says that he is long-suffering towards us, meaning that he suffers long, meaning that he's patient, he's tolerant with us. He is not willing that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Therefore, if Jay-Z said that he believes in one God, then what one God is he referring to? Because since he doesn't believe in Christians, which I just read in the book of Acts, and if he doesn't believe in hell, which is also taught in the Bible I just read, then that tells me that he does not believe in the inspired word of God, which is, spoken, which is the spoken word of God to his believers through his son Jesus Christ, which Jay-Z did not even mention in his interview. As a matter of fact, y'all know the song uh, that he sang with Alicia Keys, Empire State of Mind? All right. I want you to pay attention. The next time you look at, listen to that song, pay attention to the lyrics because there are lyrics in that song that does talk about New York City, the bright lights and the big buildings, as well as being a city of sin and, and good girls gone bad and wrong lifestyles that they lead. But then Jay-Z, in his rapping part of the song, he goes on to say that Jesus can't save you. Life starts when the church ends. So again, I ask, what one God does Jay-Z believe in? A commentary by theologian Alexander McLaren states that the cross is the magnet of Christianity. Jesus Christ draws men, but it is by his cross mainly. You demagnetize Christianity, as all history shows. If you strike out the death on the cross for a world's sin, and if you strike out the cross, the if you strike out the death on the cross for a world's sin, what is left is not a magnet, but a bit of scrap iron. Now, again, young people, and I'm sure adults too have heard of Lil Nas X. According to Newsweek article that's dated March 29, 2021, conspiracy theorists have labeled rapper Lil Nas X a member, again, of the same uh, cult, Illuminati, that I just mentioned about Jay-Z after he revealed his controversial pair of Satan shoes. The pair of black and red sneakers feature a pentagram and an inverted cross design, and most controversially, each of the 666 pairs contain a single drop of human blood, according to the creator. New York-based MSCHF made the sneakers by modifying the Nike Air Max 97s and have priced each pair at $1,018, $1,018, a reference to the Bible passage Luke 10 and 18, which reads, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. 
Nike has distanced itself from the design and told CNN, we don't have a relationship with Lil Nas or MSCHF. Nike did not design or release these shoes, and we do not endorse them. This is how squatters come and live on your property, by you not paying attention to your house and giving rental keys to anyone you think is okay to stay there for a while. Whether it's your music or your clothing, pay attention to who those things represent. Now, although the beat of the music is bumping, <laughs> and it may sound good, you need to ask yourself, what is really going on? What is the message being conveyed through the music? Although you may look snatched and on fire, I can't snap my finger, and on fire by the clothes you wear and the shoes you have on your feet, you need to ask yourself, who is the designer? What do they represent? You have to remember that you're putting money, you, are putting money in their pockets, which means that you are aiding them in furthering their cause that could be very well detrimental to your life. You've got Jay-Z and Lil Nas X living rent-free in your life while you're paying for their lifestyle. Revelations 20, 14, and 15 tells us that death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire, and anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is God's final judgment against everything that is wicked. That means Satan, the beast, the false prophets, the demons, death, the grave, and all those whose names are not recorded in the book of life because they did not place their faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? So who are you listening to? Who are you allowing to squatter on your property? Going back to the scripture reference in uh, Mark chapter 12 verses 1 through 12, it's an illustration of people who have been given access to use someone else's property, right? But unbeknownst to the landowner in this parable, the, uh, the tenants had ulterior motives, which was to take what did not belong to them. The landowner clearly rented the property. He did not give it away. And you see how relentless the tenants or the vine dressers in this parable were and how they had purposed in their mind to take the owner's property by any means necessary. But they made a really big mistake. After getting rid of the many servants sent to retrieve the landowner's property, they figured that if they could get rid of the owner's one and only beloved son, then they could take over the entire vineyard. After all, probably having been there perhaps about three years, which was the common amount of time of work in the land as squatters, they felt that they had their rights. Now, this parable is not only talking about the heartlessness of the religious leaders in Israel, which were portrayed by the tenants or the vine dressers in this parable, but it also is about the attitude of some of God's people. Godless Christians or carnal Christians, we might call them. Just as the tenants had many servants coming to give them the message from the landowner, there are a lot of carnal Christians who have many servants coming from God to give them an important message, but they are refusing to hear it. These are people who can be saved. They may be on their way to heaven, and they say they love Jesus, but their daily life does not look for God to have a big role in it. These are people who don't figure God and his will into any decisions in their lives. They live, live as if there is no God. They live on God's property as if it belongs to them. These are people who are squatters also. And if you're guilty of this attitude, it's time to repent. It's time to get back to the purpose for which you were saved. We need to be producing the fruit of the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Titus 2, 11 through 13 declares, For the grace of God which brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So how can you prevent squatters from moving in? 
inspect your life closely is what you could do. And don't take any unholy thing that you find for granted. Refuse to coexist with Satan. Refuse to coexist for Satan. In spite of what you may hear, you don't have to coexist with Satan. James 4 and 7 directs us to submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist him before he has taken up residence and has any legal grounds to stay. You have the power to do so. And you don't have to allow Satan to remain on your property, no matter how many generations back he may have already been there. How can you get rid of squatters from previous generations? Repent on behalf of whoever allowed the sin originally. Cover the curses with the blood of Jesus. That's your no trespassing sign. The blood of Jesus is your no trespassing sign. And reject any part of any pattern of such sin and demand that Satan leave your property immediately. Watch closely for any attempt for, his to, for him to return to start a new cycle. Now, just as the beloved son of the landowner was beaten, so was Jesus. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was beaten for our sins and our transgressions. The chastisement that was due for us, it was upon him. He was spat upon. He was ridiculed. He was delivered into the hands of those who ultimately murdered him. Jesus endured all this because of his enemy, our enemy, Satan. He desires to steal from us. His desire is to kill us. His desire is to destroy all of us. But the story didn't end there with Jesus. Jesus endured the sufferings of this world because of the great love that he has for us all. He endured the suffering of Calvary's cross for all of us, black and white, brown, yellow, whatever color you are. He suffered the cross for the gay, for the lesbian, for the bisexual, even them, the LGBTQ community, all of them. He so loved the whole world, he said, that he gave for the young, for the old, for the infants. Luke 24 and 26 asked the question, was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? The answer is yes. For without the sufferings of, the, of Christ on the cross, we would all still be lost in our sins. We would have to pay the debt due to our transgressions, due to our iniquities, due to our sins. The Pharisees, they understood this message of the parable. That's why they left Jesus alone, for a season anyway. And that's why it's so important for you not to allow anyone or anything to squatter you out of what is rightly yours. Amen. That's why it's so crucial that you not allow anything or anyone to squatter you out of what Jesus died on the cross just for you. You are valuable to Jesus, I want you to know. You are a treasure to Jesus, I want you to know. You are a chosen person for a purpose by the Father himself. Your destiny is to do the will of the Father. Your ultimate destiny, destiny is eternal life. Your ultimate destiny is a glorious new environment with the Father and the Son. Amen? All of us have an opportunity to not allow squatters to come and take over what God has for us, what he has purposed for us. Squatters, they are nothing but thieves and robbers. People who will not enter into the kingdom of God because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6 and 10 that thieves, the greedy, the drunks, the abusive people, and swindlers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus said in John 10, 10 that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, I, Jesus, the good shepherd, the I am that I am, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. He said that I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. My final thought as I come to a close is that God has bestowed upon each one of us a wonderful life filled with infinite possibilities 
and we're meant to use all that he has given to us for our pleasure and for our enjoyment here on earth and for his glory now and in eternity. So children, youth, young people, adults alike, waste nothing. Guard every inch of your life. Guard every inch of your life. Don't leave any room open, not even a yardstick length for Satan to move in. Build your house on praise. Build your life on praise and thanksgiving and a humble heart on every acre of your property. And do not allow any room for squatters to come in and take what does not belong to them. Amen? Amen. Let's give God praise for his word. Let us all stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I can tell she has been with Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I can tell she has been with Jesus. Because only the Holy Ghost can bring a word like that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There may be someone in here, every head bowed, every eye closed. Time to get some stuff off your property. Time to beat some stuff up. Time to put a no trespassing sign on some property. You may have been away from the property a long time, but you see the trash and the rubbish on it now. Time to clean up your area. Will there be one in here today that will accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior? after hearing such a great word. Don't linger. Come. While the blood is still running warm in your veins. Come while you still have an opportunity. Come till now to let God know I'm here and I'm trying to get things straight now. And the only way, the only way, the only way I can get it straight now is I got to accept Jesus as my personal Savior. That's the invitation up to you this morning. This is what's, this is what's on your mind this morning. She, she, she even went down to the day's artists and what they're telling you. But we are telling you that Jesus is the way out. He has always been the way out. And he will always be the way out. Will there be one here this morning? Just raise your hand. Wherever you are. Amen. You might be wanting to be a member of this church. You might be wanting to be a member of Zion Canaan Baptist Church. All of our associate ministers are great men and women of God. They are fulfilling what God has called them to be and to do. Right now, will there be one? If you're in this room and you desire prayer, just raise your hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for the woman of God that you sent unto us this morning. We thank you for the word that you put in her mouth. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that moved among us. I pray, Father God, that this resonates in all our hearts, that we begin to examine ourselves and begin to push back those things that, don't be, that don't should be, shouldn't be in our lives. Oh, Father God, we're getting to clear off our space because we want Jesus. We want the Holy Spirit 
We want the spirit of the living God to fall fresh on us. Oh, Father God, I thank you right now. I pray for the young people. I pray that they didn't turn a deaf ear to this message. I pray, Father God, that this resonate and they go back themselves and look at, listen to it over and over and over again. Father God, I pray that the adults do the same. I pray that all of us take heed to what the woman of God spoke unto us this morning. I don't know, Father, there may be some on YouTube. There may be some on Facebook right now. Just repeat this simple prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm asking you right now to come into my heart. I'm asking you, I repent now. I turn away. I recognize that I am a sinner. But I, I, after hearing this word this morning, I realize that I need you. I need you more and more and more. And you, you said you had the audacity to say, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, Father God, I just thank you right now. Whosoever call upon him shall be saved. Help them to realize, help them to realize that, that, that the church cannot close the doors. The doors was open 2,000 years ago. And even if they leave out of this building, they still can say, help me, Lord. I want to be saved. I want to be delivered. I want to be set free. I thank you, Father, for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said, amen. You may be seated for just a second. Just a second. I want to, uh, before I pray for the offering, I want to let the young people know that somebody's, um, Brother Ronald Rims, Ramos, Ramos. Um, last, he was here with the, he was the president of the Midlands Technical College who came and spoke with us. You remember that? He donated $300 to the youth ministry. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I heard the youth director, she already didn't spend the money. She already didn't spend the money. $300 to the youth ministry. Amen. Also, then, also, before we go any further, our grief counseling class will start this Thursday. Um, be looking for the correct time when it will start. I think it's 630, but that's not, that may, I may be wrong on that. So keep that in your minds and in your hearts. Amen. Did not she minister this morning? Amen. Come on. You know you got you to gotta do your thing. Come on. Let us all stand. Well, since he gave me the mic, I'll bless the offering, too. <laughs> Father, we thank you so much for those who gave the offering today, dear God. We thank you, Father, for those who freely gave, even with a cheerful heart, dear God. We pray, God, that you would return it to them 100-fold. And we pray, God, even for those who had a desire to give, but for whatever reason they were not able to, God, we pray that you would bless them as well. Father, we pray that the money that, is, that has been raised would be used for the uplifting of your kingdom, God, for kingdom work, for evangelism, God, to do the things that you have charged us to do, dear God. And Father, we thank you so much for your word and for uh, the power of your spirit this morning, dear God. We pray, God, again, that your word does not return into you void, but that it will go forth and be purposed to, to do those things that you have purposed it to do, dear God. Thank you, Father, for every soul today. Ask God that you would keep them, bless them in, in all of their ways, God. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. All of God's people say amen. 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 Please follow the direction of the ushers as you leave. <laughs>